So I'm going to read just a small paragraph. It's on page 63 of the AA Big Book. And I'll just state that uh, my name is Carrie and I'm a grateful member of recovery. Page 63, it starts with the paragraph, second one down, we. All right, we were now at step three. Many of us said to our maker, as we understood him, God, I offer myself to thee to build with me and to do with me as thou wilt. Relieve me of the bondage of self that I may better do thy will. Take away my difficulties that victory over them may bear witness to those I would help of thy power, thy love and thy way of life. May I do thy will always. <clears throat> we thought well before taking this step making sure we were ready, that we could at last abandon ourselves utterly to him. That's it. Thank you. Yes. Well, this is a, a big part of the book right here. Step three. And of course, there is a synchronicity in the book. Steps one and two build up to this point of step three. Uh, To see that your not managerial quality or whatever is running your show is not managerial quality, <clears throat> in my experience, was essential. Because uh, that habit of managing and control, as they explain it, I think, in a couple of pages after here, uh, we're under this major delusion, even though we're confronted with tons of evidence of the unmanageability that has been directing our life by the debris and the, and the condition of our life, the head will just leapfrog that and say, all I need to do is manage better and it's going to go well. Yeah. And to me, this is a indication of a system that's protective of its system and it's a failed system. Yeah. And if you had a, a business Let's say if you had a furniture business and someone saw a, an, an ad in your little brochure and it was a picture of a couch and they ordered that couch and you made a date and you the, the couch was delivered and it looked exactly like it was in the picture, there would be no need for an excuse or a rationale or a blaming of why the couch looks different or that you didn't deliver it on time. But if you listen to the head, it's full of excuses, rationale, and blaming. And to me, that's just an indication of a failed system that can't deliver the goods, yeah? So it's constantly presenting these ideas to us, and they're always put into a future condition, never the present condition, yeah? So I feel... Self-centeredness is a failed system. And the head that we're listening to is in the act of being identified with this system. And it sees everything as self-centeredness sees it as how it pertains to it. And if you just notice it with a sort of unbiased eye, it's obvious it has an agenda that may not even be close to yours. Yeah. I used to always be surprised when I just wanted to have fun and I ended up in jail at the, like 12 at night. And then the next day I do the same thing and listen to the same uh, GPS and I'd end up in jail again. And I was completely surprised. How did I end up in jail again? Well, I followed the same fucking thing that brought me to jail to begin with the two days before. <laughs> and yet it was such a trance I had no knowledge of what was going on. You know? I had no idea I was being used for transportation. I had no idea I was driven constantly by a hundred forms of this fucking thing. And, uh, and that most of my, con my situations were self-imposed. I did not impose those conditions on me. As it says in the book, we suffer from self-imposed like calamity. Self-imposed is not you. If you look at page 64 and this whole premise that we speak from is based on a simple sentence in page 64, 
And if you had any sort of comprehension of language, I don't see how it can make any other sense than how we share it, which is being convinced, which is one of the big requirements in the beginning of recovery, is being convinced of what? Self. Yes? Okay, being convinced self, manifesting in various ways, is what has defeated us. Us and self are not the same thing. Self is something other than us. And self manifesting through our life, into our life, is what has defeated it, us. If you're convinced of this, we are now going to look at its common manifestations, it meaning selves. And then the next paragraph is resentment. Resentment isn't yours. It's a manifestation of self in your life. Yeah. Fear is not yours. First of all, the fear we're usually feeling is really mental anxiety. Mental anxiety strumming the strings of fear that are built in in all of us as an emotional vent or valve where, where we're in a threatful situation. We take flight or we fight. Most of us, we're calling at mental anxiety fear because there is no apparent threat right at this moment, and yet we're petrified. Yeah. That cannot be coming from observation. That has to be coming from ideation of the thoughts. Yes. So the thoughts are, you're going to be screwed. You're not right now, but the belief that you're going to be screwed causes you to feel screwed right now. This is insane, literally. Yeah. So if you get clear about the diagnosis, if you read this sentence, this is in the big book. This is not, we did not alter it or edit it or change anything. We're just seeing it with different eyes. Yeah. And we're looking at self as other. And we have been defeated by this other through its manifestations in our life. And a simple, super easy diagnosis. It's easier than taking a test if you have less sugar or not. It'll take one second. When you talk about resentment, do you call them yours? How does the big book describe a resentment, a manifestation of self in your life? That's quite different, isn't it? The book describes resentment as a manifestation of self in our life. We keep calling it ours. This is the act of being identified as self. That's what's going on. Yeah. Something is infected the fabric of our existence. It's the same color of the rest of the fabric of our existence. We can't notice it. Yeah. So the big book has a program filled with five through nine working steps so we can notice it finally. Yeah. So that which has defeated us in our life can be illuminated so we can see it before the defeat. Yeah. So we can preempt the calamities before the calamity, not become masters of how to deal with calamities, but not have calamities as much anymore. Yeah. Especially the mental ones. Some people's External condition hasn't changed all day and they've had 50 fucking calamities. 50 of them before 11. Yeah. And then they've been passed it on by calling others or texting others and it's gi a giant freaking cluster F, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then we're trying to deal with problems that are truly imaginary. Oh, let's, 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 feel better about August 15th on July 20th. You're in July 20th. There is no August 15th. But August 15th is the day this is going to happen. But it hasn't happened. Yeah. Isn't it insane? Someone goes to a meeting, captures the whole meeting with August 15th. While we're sober, July 28th. It's incredible. So... This mess, this, if you've fallen upon this meeting, someone 
how, who knows how. If you have, the basic premise is we're, we're implying that that which has defeated us is foreign to us. Yeah. And so when we hear the statement, I hate myself, it sounds incredibly ludicrous because something hates you, but it is not you. Or I am my own worst enemy sounds insane. Yeah. Can you imagine you, the you that you are, the rest of this damn life is your own worst enemy? That's insane. Yeah. So there may be an enemy. It's not you. There may be hatred for you, but it's not from you. Yeah. And this is what worked with me. And it's and it built a basis of sobriety in my life that has just been you know, A lot of people come into AA. They gravitate quickly to the recognition that something is doing for them what they couldn't do for themselves. Let's talk about the one topic of getting sober and staying sober. Yeah, because they never have been able to do it. Now, somehow, something seems to be assisting them in that experience. Yes? They pour a lot of gratitude to all the miracles. They... They know exactly where the miracles came from, something other than them, you know, God, whatever, the divine spirit, the abundant one, whatever. But it's they having no trouble recognizing something bringing about an effect in them that wasn't them. Yes, in a certain way. They have incredible trouble seeing something did through them what they would never have done by themselves. They're not seeing that. When they look at the past, they, they take all the claiming of whatever was driven by what you were driven to do, where you ended up by being driven by this disease. We take all credit and blame for that. But we're very easily able to give credit to the higher power in, re, in the recovery aspect. Why can't we apply that same spirit to the old employer? Because the old employer has a fucking smokescreen. Yeah. It has you taking the fall for every crime it committed through you. It has you taking the fall. And some people are dragging around shame and guilt for something they didn't even do from 40 years ago. Jesus Christ. Could you imagine be could you imagine? Buying saddles and new brushes for a dead fucking horse? You know, I saw it in my own experience. On a rudimentary level, when they, they explained to me alcoholism was a disease, I sort of got it, yeah? And it gave me a reprieve. In other words, the constant guilt and shame of what I had done was relieved a little bit. It moved away from me. And I remember this moment, it showed itself. It was awesome. I was with a, a friend of mine. He had more time than I did in AA. We rode motorcycles and we, he had a girlfriend and I had a girl that I was hoping to be a girlfriend. And we went on a motorcycle, a little jaunt, and we went back to his apartment. And as we were walking up the stairs to his apartment, a neighbor of his walked by and she had paint on her jeans and on her shirt. Yes. So she must have been painting something in her apartment. We go into his place. We're yapping, drinking, whatever. Not alcohol. <laughs> That's one thing for sure. And we're doing whatever we're doing. And then he had to go back down to the motorcycle. He forgot something down there. He came back up, and when he came in, he says, hey, Paul, my neighbor wants to talk to you because I was painting houses in the beginning of sobriety, so I thought he wanted me to give her some uh, advice, and she came in, and she said, hello, Paul, do you remember me? And I didn't, and she says, you owe me $500. So this lady had moved in with me once down in Santa Cruz, 
I took her down payment and spent it. Yeah, didn't give it to the landlord. I took it and used it. And so there I was, caught with my pants down. Should have been quite embarrassing. But I swear to God, the recognition that it was a disease had me believing a new belief that I would have done to her, to anyone else, unless you could have physically stopped me. So it wasn't personal. I didn't rip her off. I would do it. I would have done it to anyone. Yeah. Because what was driving me? Yeah. Now I made the amend, not that day, but every time I sent her a check, I said, the only reason why you're seeing this money is I'm in recovery. <laughs> That's basically it. And and then she ended up calling me for advice quite a lot for the next year or so. So you can get it. You can get that this isn't you that has defeated you. You can get it. It may be incremental. It could be like a whoosh, but you can get it because it's true. You are not the one that drove you to do t all those fucking crazy things. Something drove you. Yeah. It says it in the big book. It says we are driven by a hundred forms of fear, this and that. Yeah. Who's the driver using all that fear is the parasitical nature of the problem. Yes. The, this parasite of alcohol, I would just say addiction, is a nasty one. And it knows that. And it knows its hostility would trigger a host, any host, to throw it off as soon as possible, yeah? So in this case, it's a very smart little parasite. It convinces us that we're it, yeah? So we're listening to the parasite as if it's us, thinking we're receiving great counsel from a propaganda station. So false evidence is constantly being presented as real. And their decisions are made on this idea of self that set off trains of circumstances that bring us misfortune we feel we don't deserve. Yes? And it triggers more reliance on self and more fucking misfortune. And go on and on we go. Yeah? We drink. The genie that comes out of that bottle has more than three wishes for us. And they're not n nice. They're not good. The basic three wishes for many of us are institution, jails, or death. You're going to start visiting them <laughs> sooner or later. And you're going to stay involuntarily. <laughs> so this is the point of this platform. We don't stray from it. Because I don't, I feel if you don't see this, you're going to be looking from the problem, which is the act of being identified as self. Yeah, it's an act. We can cause play with it or we can see it. Yeah, we can play it. If we act, if we act on the act of being identified as self, there it goes. If you can see it as not you, you'll be ha you'll have relief from it. And this is what we're praying in this statement. Please relieve us of the bondage of self. Doesn't say, please stop me from drinking. No, it gets to the real root of it, which is the bondage of self, yeah? So that's how I see it. I've seen it for a long time and I haven't seen it any other way since I saw it. So here we are. So let me read this here. We are now at step three. Many of us said to our maker as we understood him, God, I offer myself to thee. This is nice to do with a person, yes? When you're new, make it a formal event, step three. You've got to give meaning to this program or the, or the problem's going to give meaning to it, yeah? Show some honor to it. Do it formally. Do exactly how they say it in the book. Write it. Don't transcribe it or shit. Write it. Just do what they say. Just follow the simple require, you know, suggestions. And you'll see what happens. Yeah. So take away my difficulties that victory over them may bear witness to those I would help of thy power. When I was praying out there on the street, I wasn't intending it to be uh, have me being used 
as a witness to those I would help of thy power. <laughs> that wasn't the that wasn't the uh, feeling I had about it. I wanted to get out of something. Yeah, I could give a shit about the other people. So we thought well before taking this step. Why? Because I'll tell you, if you do the program with a bad habit, you're going to have to go back and have that habit corrected. So a lot of people say they weren't clear enough in step one and they went through it. And that unclarity about step one caused a lot of confusion about the other steps. Yeah. So just just ask for a sober assessment not coming from you but coming from what the spirit and like for me i had it as a i got struck sober and it was like a clear like cnn news flash on my wipe clean screen and that was i'm fucked and i'm not managerial quality and that really was basically and it ended with a giant period <laughs> there was no exemption clause and I was fucked. And that was the hallelujah, really. I admitted. I admitted it was over. I really, I did. And it would have died probably on a vine, but life conspired to get me to a meeting that night. I had no idea. I just went because the lady offered me a place to stay if I'd go to a meeting. And I wanted a place to stay. So I went to that meeting and I've been going ever since for 36 years. So. It's uh, pretty awesome. What an what an invitation. That dinner that I was invited to has fed me for 36 years. Yeah. The grace and everything else that I've needed. So. If you keep identifying as that which has defeated you, you're in a sense ensuring future defeat. Yes. Because it's not going to change. Its traits aren't going to be changed. You're not going to make it a service animal. It's not going to be your amigo. Yeah. It's a parasite. It has a parasitical drive. It needs something from you. Yeah. And it's called life. It wants a, a doorway of expression here. It has to express itself through us. It doesn't have legs. It can't speak. Yeah. It can't go out and get the drink. So it drives you to it. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. So that's the point. And then we can riff as much as we want. There are so many people and so many groups that go over every letter of the book and they're incredible. We brought this thing about because we weren't hearing this message. And so therefore we wanted to put it out there. And that's why we try to really stay on point. There's a lot of experts and masters and incredibly gifted and clear people about a lot of aspects of the program. Uh, we're just humbly putting this out because I never really hear it much. And I think it's the whole point, literally. <laughs> so there you go yeah all right so anyone uh wants to share or have a question or anything martin no hands up so far if anyone has a question feel free to come in or raise your hands If we don't have anyone, then I'm gonna I'm gonna riff a little on step three and four. Okay. Walter has his hand up. Well, let's bring Walter in. I always get someone to raise the hand once I start saying I'm gonna riff again. It's pretty good. <laughs> it works, it works every time. <laughs> God forbid. Yes. All right, Walter. Yeah. Okay. Uh... I always wonder, huh? I'm just busy with a novel uh, under the volcano. Maybe somebody knows it. Uh, 
I did read it in the past. Um, now I reread it. Um, it is shocking. Every line of the book describes what I've been going through, you know. And when I first read it, I didn't notice it. I didn't realize it. And I thought to myself more often from, hey, did I live such a life? Because I did read all the novels about the, the fear, the, the wondering about the life, the drunkenness, the craziness. Or is that the result of drinking? I mean, I took as an infant, I, I took my first drink and I immediately liked it. So, huh? and when you talk about self, I mean, all the Buddhas are talking about self, that that is the main problem. You know, and addiction is is was already ten thousand is 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 as long as humanity is, is there. You know, it's been described in ancient uh, uh, spiritual uh, literature. You know, and that that's not the problem. This is only a symptom. So actually, there's nothing new. You know, and um, but so I keep wondering. You know, so is it the self? which I invented, or is it the drinking which t took me over? And yeah, you know? Because I feel myself lately a little bit in limbo from, okay. And now? <laughs> well, go about your day with those two questions hanging and see what happens. You know? A question doesn't have to be answered. It's a question just leaves room for some things. See what things come when you ask that question. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of communication in us. It doesn't come from words. Yeah. Yeah. And there's... See, I was completely surprised that I had the ability to be convinced. But I did because I have been and it says it's a we you know we need to be able to be convinced and thank god I was it took maybe a long time and maybe it was abusively overdone but I finally I was convinced that any life run on self will can hardly be a success completely convinced yeah and I've stayed convinced of these ideas that were presented in the big book i mean Every last one of them, I'm convinced of how they presented things. It's just mind-boggling. There's no argument, no debate. I don't, I don't return to investigate it again. It's just done, done. Those doors are closed. It's awesome, really. So that was a huge surprise to me. I had no idea I could be convinced. I didn't know what it meant, really. Yeah. But when it happened, I knew what it meant. I came to an end and I believed with surety, yeah, with certainty. That's what one of the definitions of being convinced is. You believe with certainty. And I believed with certainty I was fucked. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah? <laughs> and that I was unmanaged. I am not managerial quality. Certainty. No more. There was no, not one more ounce of evidence was needed. <laughs> it was just done i got the class i I'm, I'm taking the diploma and i'm going to the next to, to, to the next hopefully phys ed physical ed and go so uh well exactly how you told you see your 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 fox and then the self tries to improve but then you see that that's the point yeah If something works mostly without us knowing it, then a great value is knowing it. So now you have the value of being able to know self. You can see it. You can see it forming like clouds in the sky. Yeah. And you're just the awareness that you are can change it. Yes. Yes. It it can it can seem as if it's real without us knowing it but with us knowing it it may not be able to do that as much yeah this is mm -hmm. the power of us yeah mm -hmm. yeah it, read the book people are super selfish but they don't think so without knowing it 
this and that was going on. Yes, it's always based on us being in the dark that it can perform as if it's the light, yeah? So I don't believe in self-knowledge because to me, but I believe in knowledge of self. If you see self as something other than you, you can study it. It doesn't become a fucking lifetime uh, occupation. It leads you to the point it's not you sooner or later. I hopefully, hopefully sooner. And then there's the beginning of losing interest in it. It's, it's not that interesting of a topic. It does the same old, same old for fucking a long, long time. Yeah. So you, the only thing that keeps you interested in it is that it presents itself as us on some level. If you see it as not you, there's a loss of interest in it, which is the whole pivot point of this program. It says losing interest in self, and then all this shit starts happening. Yeah, you will now gain interest in others. You'll now look at life and see what you can contribute to it. You'll feel a new power flow in. You'll sense a conscious presence. All of this is based on losing interest in self. So the knowledge that self cannot lose interest in self is incredibly valuable. So you won't keep fucking trying to lose interest in self as self. Yeah. So mm. there's so much being revealed, like in the, uh, you know, a vision for us. It says this power is going to constantly reveal to us stuff. Exactly. It does. Yeah. It's... It's not like a revelation store that's only opened on Tuesdays and Thursdays between five and nine. Yeah. If you're present and available, you're going to get downloads. Things are going to be revealed. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So. Next up, um, Chris B. All right. Come on in. Hey, how's it going? Um, I just wanted to say hi. Uh, this is my first time in this meeting. Um, oh, nice to meet and, you. Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, I'm really interested in this space because uh, I've kind of been studying uh, kind of Eastern philosophy and stuff throughout my life, but I also have an interesting relationship with AA. My mom started going when I was like seven or eight years old. So I actually kind of grew up going to weekly meetings and meeting all the things and uh it took until my uh, almost almost 30 to become an addict and then uh you know alcohol did its thing to my brain and uh, uh let's see i kind of broke up with alcohol it's been over a year um but there were some slips due to well just getting adjusted to this new lifestyle with you know no alcohol at all um so I've just been moving from this process of identifying what I call mind, I think you call self, but this 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 construct that follows me around, I notice the mind only really works on things that are in the past. It has no way of being present, <laughs> which is weird, right? Because it seems to only be able to capture things that have just happened, but it can't capture now. And so I'm kind of like developing a new sense of self, or at least a sense of presence that is here always. And then, you know, I sleep and I work and this, and then I, I pop back into this, this mind self, but I'm getting better at noticing when it's mad or it has resentment. I work with another person that, that is, you know, having addiction and getting away with it. And my mind gets all pissed off about it. And I just go, Oh, that's my mind. Or that's, you know, that's myself going off. Let it be. I need to be in a state of compassion for this other person, right? Because they're a prisoner, just like I was, just like so many of us are. And they're, you know, I don't know. I just wanted to share. Good. <laughs> this great. space feels good. I, I would like to keep, uh, you know, holding space like this, you know, where I can kind of see the difference between the present me and this self that's following me around and trying to convince me that I'm it. Yes. Great. Well, you found it. So good. Tuesday, Thursdays. Yeah. No <laughs> password necessary. 
<laughs> I'll try and come on Thursdays. I'm gonna have to. And they're you, and stuff. they're also recorded. You don't even. Have, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome, man. Thank you for sharing. Welcome. I think we have uh, Ruben. Yeah, I w I was wondering, the big book. How is that compared to a Course in Miracles? Is there some comparison in it, or, or? Uh. And you're not only what our nature is is very comparable <laughs> yeah that that was what i thought in the uh in both books yes <laughs> but, uh, uh, that's for uh, we don't want to go too off on that today because this okay, is a summary. Sorry. but the other the other um yeah, the problem I have is that your non-duality. <laughs> yeah, yeah, come to the non-duality ones. And yeah, we'll but that are in Holland in, in deep in the night. So. <laughs> oh, is it? Oh. Yeah, well, that's a, that's the problem. It's a four o'clock in the night. So, uh, but then I don't ask this kind of questions anymore. Sorry. Well, let's just say let's just I'll use two things. One thing from the Course in Miracles, and then the idea of what we're sharing here. So, what we're sharing here is this image of us or the idea of us or the mental recognition of us is not us. Yeah. So the course of miracles on page four, something 68, I think in the blue, the blue book um, says of some very interesting thing. It says uh, we're for, we're in this act of denial of what we are and we're in this state of being firm in faith in this something else that the head has made to be ourselves. Yes? The something else that the head has made to be ourselves. The Course of Miracles says there's something else that you have made to be yourself. I don't believe you did it. I believe the head does it. So I like to say firm in faith. So faith is what makes seem, things, things believable. Things without faith aren't are completely different than what the, the effect of faith has on things, yes? So faith, act of denial of what we are. Who would say they're doing that right now? But in the head, the head is doing that. The head is act of denying what we are, and it's firm in faith in this, in this something else that it has made to be ourselves. This is what we're talking about. That idea of self is not us. That which the head has made to be us is not us. Yeah. Now, that head in the life of addiction becomes very, very, goes to extreme ends. Yeah. Yes. Of that expression of that something else is now made to be ourselves. Yeah. It brings a lot of hostile effects to us and others that are help trying to help us or just being around us, yeah? Being taken over by this, yeah? And that extreme level of takeover also has great value because it reveals a lot, yeah? That if it was a, if it was a soft, comfortable, whispering kind of defeat, you probably wouldn't notice. But because it's such a fucking flamboyant one in some of our lives, it's hard not to notice, yeah? Yes, yes. So in AA, you notice how hard it is to, to notice is because when you look at any situation, you don't see your role in it. You think everyone's fucking with you. And it's because of this and that. We're totally out to lunch. Yeah. And then we do a simple inventory process on page four, uh, for the fourth step where we take one of the major manifestations of self in our life, resentment, and we look at, all right, Wendy, I resent Wendy. Yeah, Why? She left me. What did that affect? And we have this third column, which is the instinctual agenda of the action figure. Yeah. So Wendy leaving me affected my self-esteem because I'm thinking I'm a ladies man. It affected my uh, relationships with others because they're all her friends, none of them are mine. It affected my sexual ambitions. I like to sleep with the maid that Wendy has, and now I'm not going to see the maid either. It affects my financial situations. She's rich and I'm not. I don't want to leave the BMW and go back to the Pinto. 
All these effects are caused by Wendy leaving. Yeah. And I resent her for it because of those effects. Yes. Then this is the great, this is the great move. We have a fourth column and it's what, uh, where were you or are you being selfish, self-seeking and frightened, inconsiderate and dishonest? So the spotlight leaves Wendy and goes right back to us. The last place the parasite wants the spotlight to be on. Because if you look at your role in things, you're going to see its role in things. Yes? Yes. Yes. This is the whole point. So yes. you and I take inventories of people all day. Past ones, future ones, present ones. Yet you see how much resistance most of us have in doing an inventory when it's going to be about us. People leave, a lot of people leave at step four and step nine in the in the program of recovery because the parasite doesn't want them to see it, yeah? And it knows you're going to see it if you see you because for most intentions and purposes, it and you are synonymous in a sense. You're calling self's manifestations yours. So when you see your role in shit, if you have the right understanding, you're also going to see its role and stuff. This is the beauty of it, yeah? So what is it that when you're out there, mostly what is it you're avoiding? Responsibility, pretty much, yeah? Why is that? I'm going to explain in my own experience. When I was a kid, I didn't manufacture any of this shit up, but I felt extraordinarily responsible for a lot of shit. So if I walked into a room and someone yawned, I took it personally. I must have caused that person to yawn because I'm boring, yes? And when they sat down and my father got very ill when I was six and things were going to change in my relationship with him, my mother knew this was going to be a big deal. So she sat me down. She brought the family doctor, Dr. Jan Quinto, and they explained to me, my father got ill and he won't be able to play with me as much. And I understood what they said, but how I felt was, what did I do to cause my father not to want to play with me? This was an inordinate responsibility, wasn't it? I felt yeah. I was responsible for fucking everything. So one of the great reliefs I chased after with alcoholism and addiction was to be irresponsible. I didn't want to be a whole to any account. Yeah. Well, that didn't work. So I have to go back and take, I have to see my role in things finally. Yeah, because that was the last thing I wanted to see. And this is where the relief, this is where the liberation is. When you see the fourth column and you see your role in things, you are inevitably going to see something else's role in things. And you will see what has truly defeated you. Yeah. It wants you to stay irresponsible. It loves you in the condition of blaming others. It does. It loves to, it feasts on resentments, yeah, and grievance and shit. It thrives in that petri, petri dish, yeah. But when you look at your role in things, you're going to see its role in things, yeah. And AA is about changing an acidic Petri dish to an alkaline Petri dish. Yeah? So you are not conducive for the parasite to live in anymore. You're not. When you're under its control, you're a fucking, you're like a sauna for it. Yeah? <laughs> it's just feeding off of anxiety and resentment. You're just, you're like catering everything it wants. You're catering it. Yes. In this program, we have a, the point is to have a spiritual awakening. In a sense, when you're looking at it chemically, in this example, it would be an alkaline condition. Yeah, which you thrive in and the parasite doesn't. It doesn't. It does not. Wow. Yeah. So this is the point. Course of Miracles... It's just, it's just, it's not talking about all the ways we try to get relief from self. It's just talking about self. It became so incredible that many of us, it's not going to be enough talking about self. We got to stop drinking and using. It's imperative. Uh, 
Yeah, it's imperative. Yeah. All your philosophy, like it says in the book, isn't going to help be helpful. Yeah. No. Knowing a lot about self isn't going to be helpful while you're drinking vodka. It's not going to work. If you've crossed the line, you got to stop drinking a day at a time. That's the admission. Yeah. Yeah. If you want to try it any other way, good luck. But if, for us who have crossed the line and we are in the realm of real addicts and real alcoholics, uh, all that buffoonery doesn't do shit. You just have to not drink and not use and then enter into this program of recovery. Yes? And you'll, yeah. be, you'll be sufficient enough to change that you're not going to be hospitable to the parasite anymore, actually. Yeah? You're going to be filled with the spirit which is a dreadful condition to the parasite. <laughs> completely, completely. <laughs> it's not, it's, it will find its way in there, but it's not very suitable for it. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, so. Yeah, thanks to you. It's, it's for me still very helpful for me to understand it. And again, for my daughter to wait, you to know her and to learn from it and to know yes. what I have to do. So th this is very helpful for me. Well, you know, concerning your daughter, it's more about you, even concerning your daughter. Yeah, that, yeah. that's that, that's why I'm here also, yeah, you know. Exactly. Yes, it's more about of you. Course. Take care of yourself. And you may be amazed about how different your daughter seems. <laughs> yeah. But I'm all, I'm I'm not uh, so know that I'm here at the right place. Maybe I disturb your group thing, but for me it's really helpful to to see this and to because I know you, of course, from the non-dualic point. Of, of, I follow you for years, so uh, yeah. for me this is very helpful. But oh, great! Yeah, that, that's the whole point. We don't we yeah, don't have okay? rules. We just try to stay in a lane. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, but for me, it's it's so helpful to to know. Yeah, so thank yeah. you. Great, you're welcome. Man. This is the point. <laughs> uh, you know, to see in a sense you are the key. Instead, instead of keep looking for another key. To me, it's just the most efficient way. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Mm. All right. Anyone else? Uh, Martin had to step away for a moment, but thank you, Ruben. And I don't see any other hands, Paul. Well, let's just have a long drawn out goodbye today. Sounds good. You say hello to Walter, a little in the Netherlands. Ruben, thank you, Ruben, very much. Kerry, as always, a pleasure. Jacob, you're going to have to change that Seattle, bro. I don't know why it logs me in like that sometimes. <laughs> right. Monica. Yeah, okay. Martin, thank you for hosting. Thanks, everyone who sets these things up. It seems very easy until it isn't, and you realize how much service is going on with people that have this meeting go. And, it, and on that end, I have nothing to do with it. Yeah. <laughs> um, and while every end, I have nothing to do with it, but most especially with the present, the, presenting the Zoom. Axel, nice to see you, Axel. Uh, I don't know, I, we got Walter, we got Laurie. Laurie, nice to see you, honey. Yeah. Steve in San Diego. Thank you. Thank you for posting stuff, Steve. Yeah, I'll get the uh, East Coast. I'm, I keep putting it off, but I'm going to work on it maybe today. Camarillo, Terry, pleasure. Brother in arms. Saraswati. There she is. Nice to see you. Miak. Danny M. John in Florida. Cindy H. Nice to see Cindy. Joseph, France. Chris, thank you. Welcome. Mickey, the matriarch of Madeira. J.A. from Canada. Jules on vocals. 
Yeah, we're going to be in the East Coast pretty sure in June. I'm planning on it. I just have to buy the ticket, I think. Sabina, just listening. There you go. Mike M. Oliver. Lucia. We've got, uh, let's see, other pages here. No, I think I got them back. Uh, I think I got everybody. If I missed you, I didn't really. And thank you. Oh, John K. Claire E. Ramsgate. Yes, that's cool. Phone numbers, Lucia, Sabina, Danny, MJ, Mia. All right, Tay, thank you so much for today. I hope I see you again soon. We're here every Tuesday, Thursday, and then three other talks during the week on, on another topic. And it's all on the Zen Bitch Slap event page, no passwords. Every meeting has the same, uh, it's the same link. All right, thanks. Bye-bye. Mm-hmm. <laughs>